Alrighty then, so, we're back here, and this is December, no December, February, where am I at? February 15th, on a Monday, and it, it seems like it's a beautiful day, as far as I'm seeing. I pray that your day is a beautiful day, and that your afternoon and evening are even more beautiful than that. I'm doing a series right now. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. I'm doing a series right now that uh, hopefully this uh, will go up. And uh, the, the, the last one, for some reason, gave me some issues there. I did a whole video. Uh, and then saved it to the computer. Even played it back and watched it with the window media player. Did a whole nother video, to, that was yesterday, did a whole nother video today, I was doing part two to that video, read the scripture completely through, uh, it was both basically scripture for about an hour, something went wrong, I had, I, for some reason I had this, the mouse in my lap, and I kind of leaned and something went wrong, I took a couple of pictures and then pfft, something went off. So today's one hour video completely unsaved and yesterday's video turned into some type of uh, what do you call it um, real player type of uh, symbol the cloud real player cloud and it no longer plays where it was playing yesterday so what I'm gonna do is start the series all over again and I love it I mean I hate the fact that it happened but at the same time you know, I get to read the scripture all over again and, and, and just, this time I'm going to, whereas the, the video I did yesterday, I didn't start it with the scripture, but the video I'm doing today, I'm going to start it with the scripture. And there's a reason why I'm going to do that. Now, right now, the video you see uh, moving about up top there, I'm pointing this way at this television, but the one behind me. The video up top there to the right is the uh, break breaking free. Okay, it's called breaking free. Now there's two of them that I have up there on Facebook already. There's one that's a two-hour series, and there uh, that starts off with uh, a compilation of all the videos that they call break free, and those on YouTube they call break free. Now when I did the series, the New Age church series I mentioned that but I couldn't think of the name of the video but the name of the video was break free then I spliced them all together and made a two-hour video and put Kenneth Copeland's video of leading the people to the Pope right connected that with it and that then I changed the name of it to breaking free so that's the first series that's two hours and 20 minutes uh, but this one here it's a shorter version it's, it just starts off at the end of me going like this and <laughs> It blends straight into the Kim Copeland Lead Them to Rome event. And so I'm, I'm not going to do show too much of this video because I already got two videos out there already, a few videos out there with this on it already. Uh, one of one is um, Ministers Out of the Inclusion in this closet, I think, part one, two, three, and four, which I posted months and months and months and months ago. And then there's that, that same one that I just. Um, uh, just recently renamed I think it, I renamed it Kenneth Copeland Ministries or Kenneth Copeland Care of the Pope or Care of Rome or something like that and uh, then I split it and there's another one called Jesse Duplantis Care of the Pope or Care of Rome or something to that effect but so what I want to do is I'm going to hold a couple of places here I'm in Matthew chapter 19 but I want to hold that because what I really want is Mark chapter 12 I think yeah Mark chapter 12 Mark chapter 12 and the reason why I'm going to do this is because I am um, at the end of uh, the video that I'm about to get to here the Pope is bringing forth a message and, and um, to the Word of Faith Ministries 
and he literally takes a, a, a statement that Jesus made and he and encrypts it and turns it into an inclusion statement and that and that statement that Jesus made was about the two commandments and so what the Pope does is, is he recites it this way the first commandment there are two rules love God above all and the second one was love the other and in parentheses and brackets or whatever they put the word neighbor the people were putting the um, the um, subtitles up for him because he's speaking in Italian the people putting up the uh, uh, English subtitles for him will put neighbors in brackets or parentheses or whatever and then after that he'll go on to say uh, love the other and then he'll go on to say uh, for they are our brothers and sisters and the, our goal right now is to find out that part that he added to the end maybe added to the end we're all brothers and sisters and that part in the first part love the other now the, the, we gotta be very 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 careful because these people like Pope Francis and Pope Francis and very 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 tricky and very sneaky they have their own dictionary they have their own dictionary of words when they recite words like when they specifically say love the other they what they mean is the same what he means is the same thing Karen Armstrong one of the figureheads and leaders of the Turkey's uh, Alliance of um, United uh, Nations Alliance of Civilizations where they work with Barack Obama and the leaders of Spain to bring about a one world religion and they recite that no one religion can hold salvation exclusively and anyone that tries to do that is considered an, uh, an exclusivist an extremist and a terrorist and so Karen Armstrong uses the term love the other and what she means by that is all people of other religions they'll add race in that too but but they're adding race to get at religion and they always at the end of the day reveal that is the religions coming together and so another place we'll hear it is um, I don't think I've posted the video yet or maybe I haven't shared it yet maybe it's on YouTube but it's ministers out in out of the inclusion is closet I think it's somewhere in the 50s I think right now I'm up to uh, part 53 of posting I posted part either 53 or 54 but there's a lot more than that I think it's maybe somewhere between that 54 and part 60 or something like that that uh, and this again on the computer I think there's about six more of those to post on YouTube but somewhere in between part 66 or part 70 and part 54 there's a video I think I've posted it already of Shlomo Riskins at the uh, One World Religious, religious event where Glenn Beck is of course putting, putting it together to be the keynote speaker called Restoring Honor no Restoring Courage to Israel and when Shlomo Riskins gets up he gets up just before John Hagee and he gets, begins to speak and he and he's begins to go into his little uh, antichrist speech about we need uh, um, the religions to come together Muslims Jews and Greeks we're all children of God we're all children of Abraham and uh, uh, um, we need to have a mass movement of world religions for peace now throughout this speech of his if you haven't watched it yet if you go and watch it you'll hear him using that term over and over and over love the other love the other love the other we have love for the other and we must love the other and what he means by the other is those of all religions accept them as being God's children as well you can see God in everybody's eyes like that uh, Roma Downey Roma Downey and her husband Mark Burnett was saying uh, God is in everyone like Barack Obama was saying all these people that endorse the New Age philosophy and New Age doctrine always say stuff like that. And a lot of the things that the, uh, 
bring it back to this. One of the main statements a lot of that they make a lot of times is the other. Love the other. So what he's doing, Francis is doing, Pope, I call him by his real name, Jorge Bergoglio. They keep saying Bergoglio, insisting on leaving the the G silent at you know, the second G silent in his name, and I guess they could say, Well, it's because it's Italian. The name is Italian, you've got to pronounce it Bergoglio, but not me. The Bible says Gog is the Antichrist. So when I pronounce the Pope's name, I pronounce it Jorge Mario Bagoglio and not Bagoglio. Bagoglio. So what Bagoglio is talking about is he's saying, he's twisting Christ's words. Christ is saying, love your neighbor as yourself. That's the second commandment. What Bagoglio is saying is, love the other. In other words, love the other religions. And he goes on to say, because we're all brothers and sisters. Everybody about every religion is all brothers and sisters. And that's what he means when he makes that statement, which we're going to see here in a little bit. Maybe, you know how long it takes for me to read. And maybe about an hour from now, we're going to see this video. And so, Bagoglio, you know, uh, if you want to sk skip the scripture, me reading the scripture part and breaking down this, what, what Christ is saying, then, uh, then you could, uh, you can if you want to fast forward through it or skip to the end or go to the, probably the next video or the third video in this, and I guess it'll be up to that part by now, but by then, but, um, so we're going to see if Jesus is actually saying what Bagaglio is saying love the other neighbors is everybody in this world can be actually looked at as the other depending on how we define the term the other and we'll, we'll find out that everybody on this planet every human is our neighbor that we love in word and in deed And, uh, but it doesn't say, we're going to find out if it says everybody's each other's brothers and sisters. So let's go ahead and look at that. Put on the gargoyles. There we go. All right, so in uh, Mark chapter 12, we'll start at verse 28. And Mark chapter 12, uh, verse. 28 starts off this way. I'm going to try to keep this video short. I'm try to keep this video short because some this thing is starting to act crazy on me. Sometimes it's, it saves and sometimes it doesn't. And one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceived that he had answered them well. That just means that this particular scribe exactly starting to believe Christ so he's on the on the right road ask him ask Jesus which of the first commandment which is the first commandment of all and Jesus answered him first of all the uh, first of all the commandments is here now we usually say the, the first and second commandment is to, the first commandment is to love God and the second commandment is to love your neighbor but actually the first commandment is to hear and love God so the first commandment is to hear hear either audibly or inwardly hear O Israel so we go into this defining O Israel I like to break down a little bit O Israel the O there is meaning from the Bible dictionary occurrence occurrence now we can see the word Israel and and the word O will also mean occurrence. In other words, how many times does the word Israel, in a Bible dictionary it means, how many times does the word Israel appear in the scripture from Old Testament to New? How many times did it, does it occur? That's one definition. The other twofold definition is the word O actually means, in other words, the same thing with the, the that word O itself. How many times does the word O occur? in the Bible from Old Testament to New. But it also, the word O there by itself 
individually means that it means how many times does it occur in the scripture but it also means the word the definition of the word itself which means occurrence which means a happening an event something taking place so when you see him say the first commandment is here O Israel is that saying hear this happening Israel hear this event or blessed event or hear this happening Israel and this bless hear this blessed event we can call it a blessed event because this is a blessing and not just an, an ordinary event hear this blessed event or hear this happening or the blessed happening Israel the Lord your God is one God so now we take it back to this let's go look at the dark side of of the O. When we put the word O hyphen Obama, Obama, which which is spelled O hyphen Obama at times and other times it's spelled is spelled without the hyphen, just O B A M A Obama. So it it basically means the occurrences of Obama or the occurrences at the Obamas. The happening at the high place of Baal. What happens at the high place of Baal? children are being put through the fires of Baal of Molech and uh, people like deities that are, go by the name Molech Baal children are being killed babies are being killed so when you see a man, a man that's now given his seat that's been given his seat in authority by the by the devil according to Revelation chapter 13 not just Obama Barack Obama but everybody that works with him and everybody that was working with in those offices and still do before he's president the president before him the president before that one the president before that one dating all the way back to king james king henry da, 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 the pope spectating pope you know all these guys are, be, are being given their seat and authority by satan by the devil Revelation 13 okay and the beast is described you know and it breaks it down they're the rulers of the world it says ten rulers but they're the rulers of the world directly and indirectly and so one of the last presidents I'm not gonna say Barack Obama is the last president most likely he won't be but there's a chance but most likely he won't be but there is still a slight chance of it but here in the last very end of the last days we see that this this president here bears the title it's the appellation Barack Obama Obama meaning baby killer baby killing on the bombers the occurrence of the bombers which is baby killing and his character shows his character shows that he believes in baby killing from the womb he believes that I don't want the mother punished if she doesn't want a baby it's a punishment for her to keep it so I don't want her to keep it not just a punishment to, 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 to push the baby out the womb, but a punishment. It's not just a pun to him, it's a punishment for her to bring life into this world or something living out of her womb that God breathed life into out of her womb. But it's also a punishment for her to raise this baby as you know, and to uh, to nurture this this child and to, and to as it's growing up. And the end of that is to teach the child to fear of God, to get the child to love Christ. All of that is a punishment, and that's what he means. If one of my children, Shasha and Malia, were to get pregnant, I wouldn't want them to be punished with a with a baby. I know that they don't want. I think he's referring to like if they were to get raped or something like that. I mean, if he if he means more than that, then that 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 shows even more that he's even more diabolical because she go out. Shasha and Malia go out on their own and commit adultery. You know, even at their young age. You know, say somebody taking advantage of them because they're young and convinced their mind to go ahead and go with it. And of course, the hormones and the, and the, the young uh, lust got flowing and they went through with it. You know, uh, the person that convinced them, unless they're a kid, kid like them, if they're adult can be looked at as you're a monster because they're young and they didn't understand but you tricked them into sleeping with you you know because they were adolescent you know that's why they got a word called statutory rape and God just calls it adultery you know fornication you know you, I mean 
unless they really forced themselves on them in biblical times that's called rape but in biblical times if somebody I mean you got in biblical times you got people that are in their teens getting married to uh, people in their 30s so I mean in certain under certain tribes and customs certain cultures um, they do that and unfortunately some parents will sell off their kids for a dollar for a dowry to me that's like selling your kid into slavery I'm going to pay you a dowry so I can marry your daughter you're selling your daughter pay me a dowry first and I'll let you have her these people are crazy man I mean people are crazy so your kid there is you putting a price on your child's head basically but the thing about uh, but I guess these days they understand they call it statutory rape because pe minors are they don't know any what they're doing you know here I guess <laughs> and they uh, when they give themselves over to sexual situations you know with with an, an, an adult or with someone their age you know and so I guess what Barack Obama is kind of emphasizing is that if Sasha and Malia either get raped or if they get the statutory rape or whatever, at their age, it would be punishing them to get let them keep the baby. That's still sick and, and deluded. It's deluded. You, you're you punishing the baby by putting that baby to death. That's what's really going on. If they're too young to raise this child, you as their, their father and as the, will become that baby's grandfather and as their mother you become that baby's grandmother and you'll teach them you'll help them raise the child until they're old enough to raise the child themselves not murder the child in a womb and convince yourself in them that if I let you keep this baby that's a punishment see but the reason why Barack Obama would say something like that because his last name is, his, is that uh, it's the namesake of his last name oh the occurrence at the bomber kill the baby kill the baby for who for bail bomber bombers bombers bail killing babies at the high places of bail that's what he does that's what his name represents and so when he's killing babies out the womb you know he's just showing forth the personality of his last name you know of his last name. That's not to say that other people without that last name are not killing babies because there's hundreds of people without the thousands of people without the name Obama at the end of their name that, that are killing their babies and they're no, no more justified in murder than he is. They can be forgiven of it, you know, but they're no more justified of murder than he is. Okay, so but it's his namesake. So let's go back to the O. Hear, O Israel, hear this happening, Israel. The Lord, our God, is one God. Now, this is Jesus now. Jesus is telling, talking to Israel, spiritual Israel he's talking to, because to Jesus, Israel is a mixture of Jews and Gentiles. At this time, it was just Jews. But Jesus is looking ahead ahead. The kingdom of Israel to him is Jews and Gentiles mixed. Spiritual Israel. That's why we got the book of Galatians. That's why, well, that's why Paul said what he said in the letter to the Galatians that we now have. And so, hear, O Israel, hear this happening, this blessed event, this blessed happening, Israel. The Lord our God. So Jesus is including himself in that when he says our. The Lord our God. In other words, my heavenly father is my God and your God the Lord our God is one Lord not no that that word Lord there is the English version but when we go to the to the Greek version it's talking about you know what he's referring to is you know our master our our you know it's what he's talking about our God our master our Lord our Savior and so when you get to uh, I'm not going to go into detail with, with that word Lord actually really means but I'll leave leave it at that but it's translated the Lord the Lord our God is one Lord and what he means by that one Lord he's 
he actually means what he means first of all our meaning you know that I'm Jesus Christ I'm your Savior I'm the Savior of the world and the Messiah and my God is your God my Lord is your Lord my my Heavenly Father specifically his name is Yahweh now that's as saying not the Lord of any other religion not the, not the God of any other religion we're not I'm not talking about those uh, people that worship their deities on Mars Hill where Paul later goes to preach the gospel I'm not talking about those people in Greece that worship Diana back then when Paul goes to preach to them them I'm not talking about the, the, all of the gods plural of the Romans that the Romans worship Zeus Hermes all the ones that they they worship and Dionysus all these other people I'm not talking about the and the God of the Phoenicians I'm not talking about Baal I'm not talking about any of these guys I'm talking about now the word I'm telling you but the word Baal also goes back to the word Lord but the translators are using Lord here to describe Yahweh so God is not talking about Baal Jesus is not talking about Baal he's talking about Yahweh and so I'm not talking about the God of any other religion not the Jesus of the Mormons that they think they had the real Jesus you know God's gonna introduce himself the real Jesus to them not the Jesus of the of uh, the uh, of the uh, Jehovah's Witness not the God God the Father of the Mormons not the God the Father of the Jehovah's Witness not God the Father of the uh, present-day Israelites which is the same counterfeit excuse me God the Father that the Pharisees were worshiping, thinking that they were doing doing Yahweh a favor and worshiping Yahweh when they were really not. And their forefathers had put the prophets to death were not really worshiping Yahweh either. Unless they wouldn't have put the prophets to death. They were Jews or Israelites, but they were not worshiping the real Yahweh. So the modern day Israel that goes like this and says, Jesus, you know, he was a a good man or a good prophet or a good you know but he I mean and a good orator you know good teacher but he was not we don't believe that he was the son of God we don't believe that he's the Messiah the Jews today that believe that uh, and when they say I'm gonna say this like I said in another video when these Jews today say the ones that think they're chosen because people like John Hagen their false doctrine when they say that we believe that Jesus was a good prophet and he's living they're not telling the truth because what did Jesus prophesy he prophesied he said he was a spokesman he prophesied anything that his father said if his father said this is my son in whom I will please hear you him and Jesus said of himself that he is the son of God and that he is God and that he is the Christ and Messiah here the Jews are saying we don't believe he's Messiah but he's a good prophet now we know they don't really mean that because he's prophesying of himself and saying that I'm the Messiah. So they think he's a, what really with their lips they can say, well, Jesus, he was a good prophet. We don't want to insult you, Christians. Is what they're trying to say. Because if we really tell you what we really think, we really believe he's a false prophet, which means he wasn't working for out the Yahweh that we know and believe in at all. Because if he's a false prophet, he's definitely not working for the Yahweh that we light our Hanukkah candles to. See the deception? That's the modern day Israelites. But yet, they portray as though they would not have done what their fathers would have done when they put Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ to death. Because, you know, they're, they're diplomatic. They're nice, these Jews today. They feel like, you oh, know, we don't, we don't kill people, so... We wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have put Jesus to death. We just said that you're a good prophet or a good teacher or whatever, but no. We're not going to kill him. And, and that's the same initiative that their forefathers took about the for, father, about the, the fathers before them. And they told Jesus, we would not have drank of the cup of our fathers. We would not have killed the prophets. And Jesus basically told them in a nutshell, you're lying. God is not your father. If, if God was your father, you'd believe me. You wouldn't be trying to seek, seeking to put me to death. See? <laughs> so, they, so the, the ones that were just about to kill Jesus before they did, I believe Jesus told them to 
you might as well get ready to, to drink up the cup of your fathers before you that killed the prophets because you're just about to kill the son too and Jesus even gave, gave a, a parable about that when he said that uh, a certain master or whatever sent messengers and they killed the messengers and then he, uh, the certain master or whatever sent his son and they killed his son he was talking about the prophets how they put the prophets to death in that time and then the, the sons of those people that put the prophets to death put the put the son of this master to death they killed the Christ and so the Jews today are no different they're nicer and they believe in their, in their heads and hearts that we will we would not have killed the Christ but we don't believe his Messiah but oxymoronically we'll say something like he's a good prophet but we don't really believe that because he's saying that he's Christ so he that would mean he's a false prophet and crazy for thinking that he is the son of God because they believe just like the ones that Christ put to death I mean that Christ that put Christ to death excuse me that put Christ to death same belief same belief system and so the Israel that he's referring to here is he's referring to anyone that believes on Christ as Savior and Lord so he says uh, the first talking about the first commandment is to hear oh Israel or hear this happening Israel the Lord your God is one God is one Lord not all of these lords of gods coming together to be one and be looked at as the same God I mean the God of the Jews is the God of the of, uh, of the Muslims and he's the God of the Christians and the gods of, and the same God of the Mormons take it back to this the lighting of the Hanukkah lights the Jews that don't believe in Jesus that think he's a false prophet light Hanukkah lights to Yahweh here's the only problem that's a fictitious Yahweh and we know that's the devil how do we know because if you look at any other you can do a Google search on this every other culture or every other religion well this culture got one in, in it. for the Hindu people one for the Buddhist people one for the different types of religions have a, a festival all have a festival called the festival of lights now they call it something else in their own language but when it translates into English and puts on, gets put on Google it's all translated into English as the festival of lights Hanukkah is the festival of lights the lighting of the candles of Hanukkah the festival of lights for the Jews they they're lighting lights to a pagan deity that they call Yahweh and most likely it is that demon that goes around calling himself Lucifer in biblical days he wasn't called Lucifer we know that in the Lucifer series later on he dubs, dubs himself Lucifer which means light bringer which means morning star day star when Jesus is the only day star and morning star really you know other than the actual morning stars in the sky that uh, that we read about in the book of Job and he dubs himself morning star talking about the devil dubs himself morning star how do we know again Satan the devil is transformed transformed himself into an angel of light and it's no marvel that his ministers are also tra transformed into ministers of righteousness and so he dubs himself Lucifer and he creates this religion called the Luciferian religion and he's got people worshiping him as a light and so the Jews today when they worship in the Israelites today when they when they doing the light at, at Hanukkah they're lighting a Hallel they're lighting the thing and singing a Hallel to Hallel Hallel is a means of praise it's one of the it could be found in one of the chapters of Psalms it's a prayer I forgot which chapter it is but it's a prayer in the book of Psalms that they read recite and sing great prayer but if you're not singing it to the real Yahweh then you're singing it to a false Yahweh that they sing and recite this Hallel to Hallel 
Morning Star to this one that's calling himself Morning Star to Lucifer, the devil, the one that now he can, I'm, I'm saying present tense, calling him Lucifer present tense because that's what he dubs himself Lucifer, but that's not what he really is. The one I'll say it this way to the one that dubs himself Lucifer these days, they're singing praise to him. Some of them not in the know. In the satanic no, don't know it. They're just going along with this religion, thinking I can go like this and say Christ is a false prophet. In my heart, with my lips, say Christ is he's a good prophet, but in my heart, he's a false prophet because he calls himself Christ and he's not Christ. Thinking I can go like that to the Christ and still worship his father. Now there's someone there present, some deity there present, convincing me in my mind that I'm worshiping him. That deity is not Yahweh. Yahweh is going to say something like, your lips are saying the right thing, but your heart is far from me. Your intellect is far from me. Intellect is here and here. It's far from me, which is to say the soul, the spirit of man. Your spirit is far from me. So when they do their Hanukkah light and light up the festival, light, festival lights, they're delighting for whatever reasons and praising Yahweh, they think. They're not really praising Yahweh. They're praying, praising praying to the Antichrist. All of the fallen angels, demons and devils, are the Antichrist. They are the Antichrist spirits. You know, they are the Antichrist spirits. They are the Antichrist spirit and they are the Antichrist. And so, every religion that prays to their God is actually praying to the Antichrist. Specifically speaking, the Jews. You know, well, not just the Jews, the Muslims too, all of them, they're praying to the Antichrist. And there's many fallen angels, many demons, so they're going by different names Allah, Vishnu, Rama, Brahma, you know, Bama, <laughs> Baal, uh, Molik, Diana, you know, there's a, there's a list Hermes, Zeus, Jupiter, whatever. The name, some of the names are interchangeable, you know, but they they are all the Antichrist. And that's what the Jews today pray to, the Antichrist. And so when Jesus is saying here, here, this happening, Israel, the Lord our God, include himself in it, uh, Jesus include himself, the Lord our our God is one God. He's making it very clear. There's only one Lord, one God, one one Spirit, Holy Spirit, one one baptism, one faith. Not many faiths coming together to be one faith, but one faith, the original one. The one that believes that Jesus Christ is Savior and Lord exclusively. In the only exclusive way to the Father, our Father God, which is in heaven. Like the prayer says, Our Father which art in heaven. Only one way to our Father which is in heaven is then through, through Jesus Christ. No other name under heaven whereby we must be saved is other than through Jesus Christ. There's no other unima in the Greek name, authority, and personality that we're, whereby we must be saved and whereby we must come in, come in the personality of or be transformed into the personality of whereby we must be saved other than through Jesus Christ Yahshua the Mashiach it's the only way again not all these other gods that are we bring them together and then we say they're all the same God and we're worshiping the same God and we're all brothers and sisters no the Lord our God is was one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord, thy God, or your God, our God, with all of your and our heart, and with all of your and our soul, and your and our mind, and with all of your and our strength, your and our strength. This is the first commandment. The second is like, it's like it. Namely this. You shall love the Lord your God. I mean, I'm sorry. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. 
Are we, we're going to, find, to define what he means by neighbor. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, well, master, thou hast said the truth. For there is one God, and there is none other but he. Now the other scribes are trying to trick him, always trying to, and Pharisees are trying to, always trying to trick him and trap, trap him and, you know, with the scriptures. This scribe here is actually believing on him. He's beginning to believe on him. And I said the truth, for there is one God and there is none other than he. And to love him with all the heart and with all, and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices in other words this part of the law which reason it's even defined in the law written in the law of Moses is more important than any other thing in the law of Moses even the burnt offerings and sacrifices and Jesus saw and when Jesus saw that he, that scribe, answered discreetly, he said unto him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. So this guy is coming into his kingdom. So he's being added to the list of Israel, spiritual Israel. And no man uh, after that durst ask him any question. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple how say the scribes that Christ is the son of David and then he goes on to the next topic and so right there in this scripture he makes it very clear that uh, he never well he never mentioned that every man is every man and woman is brother and sister so on the, uh, the next one we're gonna read is Luke chapter 10 verse 27 Luke 10 and 27 and now what I want to do is I want to stop this video and in the upcoming video we'll be doing Luke 10 and 27 okay